Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be fixing the Daywalker, or in other words, the strongest build Elden Ring has ever seen. What if I told you that strength, not dexterity, is the best stat for a bleed build? That the Godskin Peeler is not the highest damage twin blade, and that the Scavengers and Bandits curved swords are not the highest damage curved swords? Now in terms of stat optimization, Hero is actually the best class to start for this build. Now I want to really quickly go over the stats that are important for this build. 50 Vigor should be more than enough, it's right between the soft cap of 40 and the hard cap of 60. Now since our bleed affinity weapons are going to scale directly off of strength, we're going to start at 62 strength and then immediately prioritize trying to get to the hard cap of 80 strength as soon as we can beyond level 150. Now we push Arcane to 45 because that's the major soft cap for blood loss buildup. Now pushing this build to level 200, you are going to take Arcane to 80 after Strength to take advantage of the Occult Scaling, but we'll get more into that in a minute. Now Dexterity, we only push to 18 to hit our requirements for our weapons, and 30 Endurance is a really good sweet spot in terms of being able to have enough Stamina and wear enough Armor to get the Poise we need. The important breakpoint in PvE is 51 Poise, that will allow you to finish your attack without being interrupted most of the time. So why Bleed? Why not Occult or Heavy? It's because bleed can increase your DPS by a ton, because every time that you proc a bleed, you take 10% of a boss's total HP, plus an additional 1 or 200 damage, depending on the weapon. Okay, so let's dive right into weapons, because I know you guys are really excited about that. After doing a lot of research, it turns out that the God's Compeeler is not the strongest twin blade in the game. The strongest twin blade in the game is actually the Gargoyle's twin blade. So if you're looking to shed a little bit of weight, but you still want the same jumping power stance four hit attack, you're going to want the Beastman's Curve Swords. This is the best curve sword in the game for a bleed build. These weapons are farmed off the Azula Beastman and Crumbling Farm Azula. There's been a lot of popularity with curve swords and bleed builds, specifically the Bandit's Curve Swords and the Scavenger's Curve Swords. The Beastman Curve Sword is just flat out better than both. Curve Swords are a really cool option to apply blood loss buildup because the jumping power stance attack hits four times like a twin blade, but they're faster and weigh a lot less than a twin blade. Now the main reason for the damage being better is once again the Beastman's Curve Sword just scale better off strength than the Bandit's and Scavenger's Curve Sword scale off of dexterity. Now a common misconception among strength build users is that a heavy giant crusher is the highest AR weapon in the game. And that's just simply not true. So I wanted to show this example of why AR isn't really that important. The actual damage is important. So up top we have a occult giant crusher with 80 strength and 80 arcane using the two hand. And we have an attack power of 1085 and a motion value of 103, which is the two hand motion value for all weapons. And we're only going to deal about 986 damage. Now, below we have the quality Rusted Anchor with 80 Strength and 80 Dexterity. And we have an AR of 852 with a motion value of 103 as we are two-handing it again. Now because of counter damage, we ha are actually dealing 1110 damage. That is a 12% damage increase over the Giant Crusher with a similar amount of stats invested. So with an incredible arsenal at our disposal, let's take a look at what kind of skills we want to be using on these weapons. If you've got any history with bleed builds in Elden Ring, then you know that the best skill that we can use on a bleed build is Seppuku. Even post nerf, Seppuku is amazing. Now when it comes to armor, there's only three things that matter. The poise, the defense, and the aesthetics. As we discussed already, the white mask is mandatory for any bleed build and gives us our first five poise. For your armor, you're going to want to go Raptor's Black Feathers, which increases your jump attack damage by 10%. If you really want to maximize damage with the Twin Blades and Curve Swords, then you want to run this setup and almost exclusively jump attack. You're going to want the Elden Lord Bracers for 4 poise and a great poise to weight ratio. And we really have to make up some ground with the 28 poise on the Bullgoat Greaves in order to hit the 51 poise breakpoint so that our attacks aren't getting interrupted all the time. And here I'm going to show the difference between optimal armor and unoptimized armor. So, in my optimal armor, we have the White Mask, Raptor's Black Feathers, Tree Sentinel's Gauntlets, and Tree Sentinel's Greaves. If you've watched some of my videos, this is a pretty common set for a bleed, as it gives you 51 poise, and it weighs 28.9. Whereas, 
his optimized armor using white mask, Raptors Black Feathers, Elden Lord's Bracers, and Bulgul Greaves is going to weigh 30.4. It might not be that big of a difference just looking at the two numbers, but if you're optimizing a build, that could be a difference between a point or two of endurance, which is a big deal. Talismans are a great way to stack a ton of extra damage or defense. And the best setup is going to depend on the weapon you're running, so let's first look at the power stance of Twin Blades or Curved Swords. Lord of Blood's Exaltation is to Talismans what the White Mask is to armor. It just provides even more damage. This Talisman raises your attack power by 20% for 20 seconds every time there's blood loss. The Claw Talisman stacks with the Raptor's Black Feathers and it increases jump attack damage by 15%. This is a great option for Curved Swords and Twin Blades which hit 4 times with a jumping L1. The Rotten Wing Sword Insignia is another great option for this setup because it raises attack power with successive attacks by 6, 8, and then 13% and you'll be doing a lot of successive attacks. Now before you get to New Game Plus, I highly recommend your last talisman slot be the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, which flat out reduces all incoming physical damage by 20%. That's the equivalent of having 20% more HP. Now if you're in New Game Plus and you want to maximize the damage of your Twin Blade or Curved Sword build, you want to run Millicent's Prosthesis in your last talisman slot. This raises attack power successive attacks by 4, 6, and 11%. These are the buffs that I recommend for those of you that want something quick and not a long extravagant buff routine. We'll start off with our flask. The strength knot tier is available early and it gives us a big damage boost via stat scaling on our weapons and puts us 10 strength closer to the hard cap. The thorny crack tier increases consecutive attack damage by 9, 13, and 20%. The blood boil aromatic takes 1 second to use and gives you 30% more damage for 60 seconds. The rallying standard also takes very little time and provides a 20% damage buff for 30 seconds. And then of course we want to use seppuku for the 30 flat physical damage, the blood loss buildup, and triggering the 10% buff from the White Mask and the 20% buff from the Lord of Blood's Exaltation. For my fixed build, we're going to have 60 Vigors. That's the Vigor soft cap. There's no point in going in between the soft cap as he did, and I don't really understand why he did that. For mine, we're just going to have base mine because we're not going to use anything that really requires mine. Endurance, we're going to have 17 Endurance, and that's going to be so we can medium roll. For Strength, we're going to have 20 Strength, that is the first soft cap for Strength. And for Dexterity, we're going to have 15 Dexterity boosted to 20 with Millicent's Prosthesis. That's going to be the Dexterity soft cap, the first one. We're going to have Base Intelligence and Faith. Then we're going to have 93 Arcane. Now this is past the soft cap of 80, however, because we have the extra stats to spare, there is no point in going with more Strength or Dexterity as it doesn't scale that well. For weapons, we're going to have the Scavenger's Cure Sword with the Occult Affinity and Seppuku. And you might be thinking, wait, didn't you just say that Scavenger's Cure Sword and Bane's Cure Sword were worse than Beastman's? Yes, he did. However, as I've shown in the screenshots when he was explaining that, he was wrong. And just a basic look at that will show you that Scavengers are infinitely better. I don't understand why he chose Beastman's, because it seems to be a pretty simple conclusion to reach. For armor, we have the White Mask, Raptor's Black Feathers, and Tree Sentinel's Gauntlets, and Greaves. For Talismans, we're going to run the same Talisman, so Lord of the Blood's Exaltation, Millicent's Prosthesis, Rotten Wing Sword City, and Claw Talisman. For the Great Rune, we're going to use Jordan's Great Rune. For the Crystal Tier, we're going to use Opline Heart Tier and Thorny Crack Tier. And Opline Heart Tier is going to give us more damage negation, and Thorny Crack Tier is going to provide a similar effect to the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia and Millicent's Prosthesis which is boosting continuous attacks. 